Hey everyone, I'm Nerd Queen Alexis and welcome back to the channel and welcome to this special video where we go over the Imperial Armor Compendium. Ooh. The Compendium back in 8th edition was split up into four books which included uh, Xenos, Chaos, um, let me take a look real quick, it was Chaos, something else, uh, Forces of the Space Marines and Forces of the Imperium I believe. But it was four different books, now they combined it into one and dropped a whole bunch of things. And this is finally the video where I'm going to rant about the loss of the Repressor. So, if you do use Forge, yeah, if you use Forge World units in your army of Warhammer 40k like I do, if I'm playing my Imperial Guard, you'll see my Avenger Strike Fighters. If I'm playing my Space Marines from time to time, you'll see my Sakarans or my Spartans. Uh, Rarely you'll see my titans in pictures. I've used, um, oh, what's the, what's the big demon's name? The Slanesh one. Zarachneel? Yeah, I've used Zarachneel once or twice, and I've used quite a few different Forge World units, mostly Space Marine tanks because that's what I have the most of. Um, and I'm trying to get the saber. I'm really hoping it's in here. But this has some new units, some old units, some units are just gone, like the Elysians, I believe, are just gone out of this book. But we're going to get into this book and talk about it today. So, let's get started. Alright, so first off, I do want to apologize about the bad lighting. I can't really do anything about it. But let's take a crack into this book and see what we're on about. So, but, ah, there we go. Imperial Armor Compendium. The galaxy is a dark place, revere, and blah, 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 blah. Grim dark is grim dark is grim dark, but there's also yellow Power Rangers. Go figure. So the table of contents, this has been spoiled online quite a bit, but we do have the Chaos Knights in here as well, which is kind of cool. A good chunk of the Tau actually made it through, and a good chunk of the Tyranids made it through. So it's pretty cool to see them. Uh, forces of the Imperium, we've lost quite a bit. Uh, we lost the Sarasis Assault Ram, which makes me very upset. We lost that before, but it still hurts that it's still gone, and it was such a cool kit. Alright. Then we get some really cool pictures of the Chaos Reaver Titan, the... that thing, and the Spartan Laser Destroyer, I think that one's called. I can never remember what that one's called. The Cerberus. Always forget. Forces of the Adeptus Astartes. Chapter keyword. War gear. Abilities. Um, so let's take a look at this. Non-codex chapters and successors. This is going to be important. All rules um, concerning the non-codex compliant chapters and successor chapters that are described in Codex Space Marines also apply to data sheets in this section. Huh. Does that mean we make our own, or how does that work? Hmm. Each unit with the, uh, in this section is drawn from the chapter something... Uh, drawn from the chapter. Sometimes a data sheet will tell you what chapter that unit is from. Otherwise, it will have a chapter keyword. And that is the keyword that is select yourself. Following the guidelines and restrictions detailed in the Space Marine Codex. Or Codex Space Marines. So yeah, you just make up your own tactics now. I, I guess that's the same as before, but it still annoys me. Um, many units in this section will also have abilities listed below. If an army is battleforged, then when a unit is includes in this detachment, increase the detachment's command cost by 1 CP. Okay, so I'm guessing that's how they're doing relics nowadays. Um, named characters. Uh, several data sheets in this section describe named characters. If such a unit has the ability that is used, uh, that uses the chapter keyword. Okay, this is really hard because I have a massive glare on my side, so I do apologize. Um, must replace it with its... Uh, with the keyword with the chapter that the unit is drawn from, for example, Colin of the has the rights of battle ability. 
Huh. It's drawn from the Red Scorpions chapter. The chapter keyword is replaced in every instance with the, the ability that with Red Scorpion. Okay. So then you come over here and change that to fit however you want. Unless they actually have a... Oh, they do! Okay. Hey, Blood Ravens are in here. Nice to see them back. I was worried about them. All right, so designer notes, uh, so-called uh, cursed founding and their origins are shrouded in mystery. Their rules, purposes, we suggest that the Minotaurs are considered to be an Imperial Fist successor. I can see the Minotaurs being an Imperial Fist su successor. All right, so they say they suggest, so you don't actually have to use those tactics, which is really cool. So you can use Minotaurs and use the Ultramarines, for instance. That's what it's seeming like. If I am wrong, I do apologize and please correct me because I hate giving false information. Just don't be a jerk about it. Uh, though the Red Scorpions are technically of an unknown founding, it has been said that their zealot adherence to the Codex Astartes makes them a successor of the Ultramarines. Yeah, the stupid asses. I hate the Red Scorpions, I'm sorry. They're just such a stupid chapter. Ugh. And if you want to know why I think they're a stupid chapter, just join my Discord and I'll tell you the actual reason. Astral Claws, the Blood Ravens. Oh, what do they suggest for Blood Ravens? Um, for all purposes, we suggest the Blood Ravens are considered to be an Ultramarine. Yeah, that's what I thought. I would actually go with Raven Guard because they're... The Blood Ravens are literally made for a game and it's supposed to be the Blood Angels and the Raven Guard. Um, just fused together and that's how they came up with the sigil for it. Um, that is actually from the game. Like, that was... I think that was in an interview with the person who designed the game, but I'm not 100% on that, so I could be wrong. And if I am, I am. It's whatever. I know they were never considered, never supposed to be considered canon, even in their own books, until very recently, where they released them in White Dwarf, and they gave them all sorts of rules and everything. And they gave them uh, some really cool lore about them actually trading, uh, training with psychers uh, for relics of chapters. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. It, it's a nod at them stealing relics, but it's also a nod at, uh, they're kind of like a death watch, but with psychers. Kakara not so dumb. Now this, this is going to annoy me. There's no pictures of anything. So if you are new and pick this book up, you are going to be so confused, sitting there, Googling the names, trying to figure out what the hell they are. That is something that I really don't like in here. And yeah, like, I'm not gonna lie, I barely know the Forge World characters because I always viewed the Forge World characters as, I've read a bunch of their lore a while ago and their lore is literally, my dad can beat up your dad because they're better. Uh, but it looks like it starts off with the Red Scorpions. Uh, yeah, because there's the Leviathan Dreadnought for the Red Scorpions, so he made it. Uh, there's another Red Scorpion. There's the Astral Claws. Um, there's another Astral Claws. Okay, so they made it. But there's Gabriel Angelos. I, I actually want to see his stats. So let me take a look at this. Sorry, I have to tilt it up so I can read it. Gabriel Angelos, movement five, because he's in Terminate Armor. Uh, two plus, two plus for weapon and ballistic skills. Strength four, toughness four. It should be toughness five. He's big. Uh, wounds seven, five attacks. Leadership nine, should be 10. Save two plus. He has God Splitter, which is split up into two different uh, attack variants. So it's either times two, minus three, uh, three damage. Each time an attack with this weapon is made, profile, subtract one from the attacker's hit roll. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified roll of a six inflicts one mortal wound to the target in addition to any, any damage. So that's a strength eight hit. Uh, prefer for strength 10. Uh, I feel like his, he is big enough to be strength 10. He's essentially a Primarch uh, in size wise because of, god damn, if you ever put him next to Gilliman, you'll see that he is very chunky. Um, he, he is just like Campbell's chicken noodle soup. He is chunky. Actually, 
Campbell's soup is not chunky at all. What's that other soup that everybody likes that's really chunky? I can't remember. Anyway. Then he's got a sweeping blow, um, which I'm sure he does to Aldar all the time. Uh, strength 6, because it's strength plus 2, so 4 plus 2 is 6. AP minus 1, 1 damage. Uh, makes 3 attacks with this instead. So that is a total of 15 attacks with sweeping blow. He is a monster. He's got the Angel of Death, Teleporter Strike, Iron Halo, Rites of Battle. He's a chapter master, which is really cool. He also has Leap into the Fray, because get it, he jumps. He's got a jump pack on his Terminator armor, which is really cool. It's extremely rare, too. Um, which actually hints more at him being a Blood Angel than anything else, uh, because the Blood Angels have the Dreadnoughts that have that. Um, so I can see them attaching it to Terminator armor. After this model finishes a charge move, select one enemy unit within engagement range and roll 1d6 on a 4+, plus that enemy suffers d3 mortal wounds. Get it? It's his little ground pound. <laughs> I love Gabriel Angelos. He's so silly. Uh, Charlotte Mullock is in here. That's cool. Um, I don't know who you are. Huh. You're Minotaur's character. Wait, are you the one that has the lightning claws? No, you're the chaplain. Is that the one with the lightning claws? That's a, that's a Leonidas. It's a chaplain. And then Terus, the Red Wake. There he is. He's got the lightning claws. He is awesome. I love him. He's one of the coolest models ever because he has lightning claws with chain fists on them. Um, so yeah, AP minus 4, strength plus 2, 2 damage apiece. That's pretty average for his weapon. Um, but yeah, I really, I do like these guys. So it's cool to see them in here. Uh, you're the Dreadnought. You're the uh, Salamander Dreadnought. So I'm surprised to see him in here because GW doesn't... Oh, well, Forge World doesn't make that kit, I don't believe. Which is kind of strange, because they weren't supposed to include them. So, it's interesting. The Command Rhino. They don't make this kit either. This kit is out of production. Like, you can only get this at Forge World, at um, Warhammer World in Europe. Like, that's the only spot to get this kit. So, they released this, but not the Repressor. Okay, I'm, mmm, mmm, I am, uh, quite nettled about that. Uh, so this thing just has a chapter keyword, it doesn't matter which chapter it's with. Um, it has pretty much the same rules. More gear options, can take a hunt to kill a missile. Oh, it actually doesn't, it only has a Storm Bolter. I thought it would have options to take two. Um, if your army is Battleforge, then each detachment in your army can only include one of these things. So there's the there's the relic rule, which is kind of neat. Explodes, Angel of Death, Command Uplink, Aura. I do love that they say Aura now. When a friendly unit is within six inches of this model. That unit always considered to be within range of the following or abilities uh, of any friendly chapter unit that are on the battlefield. Rights of battle for tactical precision. Ooh. That could be nasty. It's always considered to be within range of the following or ability of any friendly chapter unit that are on the battlefield. Rise of battle, tactical precision. What does tactical precision do again? So I had to actually look up what tactical precision was. It's the Lieutenant's Aura ability. Uh, sorry about that. It took forever to find it in here. And I have mine like marked. Like, yeah. Anyway, let's put that over there. So you do get to reroll ones to wound with this thing if you're a chapter core unit, which is kind of neat. Uh, then it has the Commander Authority at the start of your command phase. If this model is on a battlefield, roll 1d6. On a 5+, plus, you gain one command point. This is kind of just a, a good little unit. It's fairly cheap. You stick it in the back and you don't care too much about it. You just stick it with some Devastators or some Heavy Hitters. It's big, so it's going to have a... Uh, 
It's a rhino, so it has a massive aura ability around it. And, yeah. You can only have one of it in your army. It's an HQ choice. It's pretty solid. Like, I don't see anything wrong with it. I like it. And I guess, no, because it's even toughness seven, so 10 wounds. Uh, if your opponent takes uh, some sh secondaries for destroying a tank and destroying characters, which I don't think this thing counts as a character. No, it doesn't. No. Um, so yeah, they'd have to just destroy it as any other tank. So pretty decent. And then you, which is a dreadnought of the, where are you from? The Minotaur dreadnought. Oh yeah, that's the cool looking one. I really like him. I'm trying to remember what the hell the, the damn guys are. Like it's really tough to remember what they are without pictures. It would have taken like two seconds to add pictures. They even have the little bubble for it. Just add a damn picture. I'm sorry, look. Like I get it, it's not a codex, but still. It's the same goddamn thing. Not hard. I'm a little bit annoyed with that. It would take two seconds. So Derodeo Dreadnought, I think this thing got nerfed as well, but it does have all of its different weapons as one Dreadnought, which is cool. So it's all right here. So mine, unfortunately, is stuck with the, um, the auto cannon battery, which honestly is pretty good because strength seven AP minus two, two damage. Um, then it has the missile launchers, which are now blast weapons, which is pretty good. Um, you have the Volkite blasters. Depends how you outfit this thing. Uh, let's see, 12 wounds. Um, it doesn't... Yeah, it goes down quite a bit. Its movement, its ballistic skill goes up to 5 plus. Oof. That's not great, and it's hitting on threes. Uh, that's... I mean, it's it's okay for a Dreadnought firing platform. It's okay. Um... Do, 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 can switch out its weapons. Um, I think it actually lost its shield, didn't it? It's equipped with the auto cannon battery and twin heavy bolters. Yeah, he lost his shield. Okay, does he have the options to take a shield? Because he used to have this projection shield that was super useful, and that's why I always took a Derrideo in my older lists. Until they nerfed it. Um... Oh, they do have a shield. Uh... Page 7. What? Of this book? I assume this book. Okay, so yeah, it increases your command points uh, by one for the detachment he's in, so take him in the detachment that includes warlords, so you don't have to pay for him. Um, so that's the new relic rule. It's kind of cool to see, like, uh, relics just take up more. I, I, see, they got the keyword down here, but then they don't have anything against taking multiple relics now. So, is it before this? No, because that's just the intro. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything about not taking multiple relics. It just looks like it makes your your company more expensive in command points. But then you just take an HQ in it, and it, that goes away. So, yeah. Then it has Explode. Uh, seems pretty decent for what it is. No complaints from me. Uh, the last cannon battery is now D3 plus 3, which is really good. Although, I don't know if I really like that. Heavy 2, so it's 4 shots. Strike 9, AP minus 3. I actually think I like the auto cannons the best at this point. Yeah. Well, this one's heavy 6, so that's 12 shots. That's 16 shots. Or is that... Is equipped with... Oh, that's all of the shots. Never mind, it's not double the shots. I thought it counted as two weapon systems, so that's my bad. All right. Daredale, looking mediocre. He's not bad, he's just not really that good. And it's weird that he doesn't have his shield anymore. 
See the Contemptor Dreadnought data sheet. So he's got his five up invo save, I assume? Let me see. Contemptor Dreadnought. Wow. There we go. So fast. Heavy elites every four fast. Dreadnought, Redemptor Dreadnought. Ironclad Dreadnought. There he is. Um, yeah, he just has a 5 up info save now. So he doesn't have his uh, bubble projector anymore. So the best thing about him is gone. Uh, that's kind of a pain in the butt. Because she's still a Vazriel that does it. Relic Contemptor Dreadnought is now on 3 plus instead of, four, instead of 2 plus. Uh, that kind of hurts. Uh, Leviathan Dreadnought is again on 3 plus, goes down to 5 pluses. Uh, and it looks like his weapon's got a nerf in range. Oh, the Cyclonic Melted Lance is still the same. Huh. Graflex Bombard is only 24 inches now, but that's, that's okay because the table size has shrunk, so that's effectively 34 inches of the table he can cover. Because you put him at the front of your lines, the line is 10 inches up. Uh, your deployment lines, by the way. Um, so not bad. Not great. Uh, the Graflex Bombard is a blast weapon, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah. Relic Contemptors look like they took a nerf. God, they all took a nerf. I remember them being a 2+. plus. I was pretty sure they were a 2+. Plus. Hmm. Uh, each one of the models, Graphflex Bombards, can be replaced. Yep. Um, this model's two heavy flamers can be replaced with two Volkite Chevrains. This model can be equipped with 300 killer missiles, because one is not enough. Uh, Angel of Death, Duty Eternal, Atomic Shielding, um, Legacy, Explode. Yeah, so it doesn't shrug off damage, or there's no... He's got a 5 plus info save. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, they just... They don't seem that good anymore. I guess the Leviathan is still really good, but... Compared to what he used to be... It really depends what the army does around him. That I'm... I'm cons... I guess, I gotta see how Iron Hands players handle this. The Relic Contemptor Dreadnought just... Is there any real difference? Oh, he's got the Conversion Beamer still. Uh, and the Graviton Blaster, Twin Auto Cannons, um, Volkite Chevrain. Uh, let's see. The Plasma Blast Gun. Two Heavy Plasma Cannons. Huh. He can't get the last cannons anymore. That's interesting. Relic Contemptor Dreadnoughts with four last cannons used to be my jam. I guess you can do two conversion beamers and stick them really far away? Hmm. Twin Auto Cannons are pretty decent on him. Volkite Chevrain, the... Uh, maybe the Plasma Blaster is better. Because those are just in his power fists, aren't they? And the Dreadnought is equipped with two heavy plasma cannons. Uh, each of this model's heavy plasma cannons can be replaced with one of the following. Um, conversion Beamer, Carries Pattern, Assault Cannon, multi melta Twin Auto Cannon, Twin Heavy Bolter, Twin Last Cannon. Okay, so you still can do four Last Cannons on this guy. Um, twin Volkite Chevrain, one Dreadnought Chain Fist, and one Storm Bolter, one Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon, and one Storm Bolter. Uh, each of this model's storm bolters can be replaced with the Graviton Blaster, Heavy Flamer, or the Plasma Blaster. Okay, that is not bad. Uh, this model may be equipped with one cyc uh, Cyclone Missile Launcher, which is also pretty decent. Okay, so he's not terrible, but he's on three pluses. I think the Venerable Dread is on two pluses, isn't he? Okay, let's see. He is by... So this is the problem with Space Marines. They're all elites. So it's really hard to pick what 
style of army you want to go with. Where the heck are the dreadnoughts? There we go. Uh, Venerable Dreadnought, 2+. plus. So it's weird that a Relic Contemptor Dreadnought is on 3 pluses. I guess it's for balance purposes, but at the same time it just seems kind of weird. It feels off that there are 3 pluses and go to a... Well, he doesn't change. So he starts at 9 wounds and doesn't change. Uh, he's not a character, so that's okay. Leviathan seems to have taken a huge point uh, boost. Has he taken a point boost? He, I feel like he has. All right, then we get the Landspeeder Tempest. Somehow that made it. Cause you know, that's that vehicle that everybody knows about with the missile launcher and the uh, assault cannon. Everybody knows about the Landspeeder Tempest. It's one of the highest selling models on GW's uh, Forge World's website. And if you, if you don't know what that is, well, then you're silly. Um, okay, jokes aside, it's, um, why is this in here? This is in here, but the repressor isn't? Come on. The, never mind. I don't even care. I do care. I care a lot. I'm really pissed about the loss of the repressor. Then we get the javelin attack speeders. These are the deodorants, um, the deodorant stick uh, line speeders. So it's got its Javelin Missile Launcher, which is kind of cool because a Javelin Missile is an actual thing. Uh, frag Missile is heavy 3 to 6. Crack Missile is that. It's got a Heavy Bolter in that. This model's Javelin Missile Launcher can be replaced with two last cannons. This model uh, Heavy Bolter can be replaced with one Multi Malta. Uh, this model can be equipped with two Hunter Killer Missiles. So you can deck it out for killing... Um, Killing uh, um, heavy inf heavy vehicles and light vehicles and infantry, but it's toughness six. It's kind of garbage. Just saying. The Death Storm drop pod made it because of course it did. Lands uh, Land Raider Protus made it, uh, and that's the one with the. Oh, this is the HQ one. Well, not the HQ one, because it's heavy support, but this is the communications one. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo. Uh, enemy units that are set up on the battlefield as reinforcements cannot set up within 12 inches of this model. Um, the bearer has a transport capacity of 6 um, infantry models instead of 10. Huh. But what does it say it can transport? This model has a transport capacity of 10 infantry models. Uh, each jump pack, wolfen, or terminator model takes up two, uh, and each centurion takes up three. This model cannot transport primaris units. You know, they're not allowed, they're too tall. They bang their heads on the ceiling. Uh, it's, it's very annoying. Heavy armor, this model has a five up info save. Uh, it's a land raider, but it's not terrible, but I feel like instead of this, you would just take some Primaris, um, some, uh, some, uh, the Infiltrator ones that do essentially the same thing, and you can spread them out a bit further. I, I guess this is okay. Uh, it has the Angel of Death and the Legacy Rule. Uh, it, it's a Land Raider. Land Raiders actually got a significant buff because of the heavy weapon thing, which is something that I said they always needed. But yeah, Land Raider Achilles, which I love the Land Raider Achilles. It's so cool because it's got the Thunderfire Cannon in the front of it. It's a super, super neat Land Raider. Um, I really like it. I'm hoping the Land Raider Helios made it, but I don't think it did, which sucks because that's the Land Raider that I have. Uh, this model models two Volkite Chevrains can be replaced with two multi meltas, which is what I would do. This model is equipped with this model can be equipped with one hunter killer missile. This model may be equipped with one heavy uh, storm bolter. Um, has the quad launcher, which is the shadow shells and the thunder fire shells. Uh, so it's a thunder fire cannon, and that's pretty much it. It has movement of ten. So if you take line with it and move up, you're looking at uh, twenty inches. 
then 24 inches with your multi melted so you are within range of your multi melted turn one uh, it is a lot of points though and uh, yeah I mean you can with this you can target things that you can't see so if you need to kill um, drones uh, Tau drones this thing's really easy at doing it oh look the scar and battle tank oh look those are the only land raiders Yep, Achilles is gone. Prometheus is also gone. Um, so is the Ares. Oh, God damn, my two of my vehicles so far are hit. All right, it's a car and battle tank. It has the uh, the the hysterical pattern auto cannons. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Uh, which is heavy six, strength seven, AP minus two, three damage. They upped its damage. That's actually super good. This model can be equipped with two heavy bolters, two last cannons, one of the following. Uh, this model may be equipped with a hunter killer missile and a storm bolter. Um, Sakarin is actually 14 inch movement, damn. This thing can grab an objective late game. Uh, it's ballistic skill goes down from three to five, which is understandable at this point. Sakarins are actually good. I would say they're good. Is it two of these things? No, just one. So it's heavy six, so six shots of strength seven, AP minus two, three damage. That's a marine killer. Uh, unless they take, of course, the things that mi make minus two do nothing and then they take a three up save or they gun into cover and then they have a two up save and it's really, really, really hard. But that's when you use your heavier weapons to kill those guys, or weapons that deny cover saves to kill those guys. The Sakaran Arcus um, has the multi launcher. This is the. Arcus. Which one is the Arcus? I'm gonna have to look that up really quickly. Okay, it is the one with the Scorpius missile launcher. I had to look that up. Because I, I keep forgetting its name. I actually have three of these sand things. They're not painted, but I have them. Um, so it has a 2d6, uh, strength 6, AP minus 1, 2 damage weapon. Pretty good at killing marines. And it can shoot things that it can't see. So this Sakaran is actually really, really, really good at killing Tau drones. Um, and units hiding on objectives and everything, because it will kill them. Especially if it takes a little bit into, uh, actually it doesn't even have to move out of your deployment zone. It's going to hit everything on the table just about, if you place it in the middle, of course. So, I think the Sakarans are kind of worth it. I really like the Sakarans. Then you have the Venator with the uh, Neutron Laser. This thing kills Titans. Um, it, it does. It, it just does. The Punisher essentially has a Punisher rotor cannon. It's a uh, heavy 30, range 36, heavy 18, strength 6, AP minus 1, 1 damage. I honestly think this one is the worst, uh, which is really funny to say. If I were to say which one is the best, I'd have to go with the Arcus, um, then the regular Sakaran. In my opinion, strictly my opinion, no one else's. Oh, we got the War 1 Scorpius in here. And then we get the Omega in here. Oh, this is the one with the plasma battery. Um, this one's not that good. Heavy 6, strength 8, AP minus 3, 2 damage. Uh, and then it can have a supercharge for strength 9, AP minus 3, 3 damage. Um, and it hurts itself. Yeah, I wouldn't take this one. I would just go with the Arcus and the Barebone Sakharin. Oh, we get the Rapier Carrier. Nice. Let's get the quad launcher. Oh, what did they do to the quad launcher? Oh, they just turned it into a thunderfire cannon. Oh, that's annoying. Huh. It still has the shatter shells, which is really good. The strength, uh, heavy four strength, eight AP minus two, three damage weapons. And these things are dirt cheap, and I think they come in units of three. Uh, it's equipped with a bolt gun, quad heavy bolter, a reaper carrier, unit can only have a one separate space marine crew model. Okay, so, oh, 
They're not in units anymore. It's just one dude. I, mmm. I don't know if I like that. I think I'd give it the quad launcher out of all of its weapons. Or the laser destroyer. Heavy 3, strength 10, AP minus 4, D3 plus 3. Just go ahead and just wipe out a... Is that good though? I mean, you could take the new thing and get the last Talon, which is way better. I... Alright, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. I gotta compare. Sorry, it's just something that I have to do. Where is this silly guy sitting on his... There it is. So... Strength 7, AP minus 4, but heavy 6. And heavy 4 for the last Talon, but only 24 inch range. Okay. This thing can move further at 4 inches. Um, everything else is the same. Well, the, um, the Fire Strike has a higher leadership, because that matters. Um, I guess the quad launcher... Well, the shatter cells are only uh, 24 inches, so the plasma... T the last Helen is a bit better. Huh. The Graviton gun is heavy D6, strength 5, AP minus 3, 2 damage, 36 inch range. Uh, when resolving an attack made with this weapon against a unit with a saving characteristic of 3 plus, uh, or better, this model has a damage characteristic of 3 instead of 2. I would definitely kill Marines, Terminators, Centurions, Aggressors, and that nature. Um, so I guess the, the Graviton Gun is better. The Laser Destroyer is, is a little bit better than the last Talon, but the last Talon has one more shot at AP minus 3, D6. The laser destroy is D3 plus 3 automatically, which is better in my opinion. The quad heavy bolter is kind of neat. I, I do love quad heavy bolters. I just wish they were in a squad again. Um, yeah, they're 2 damage. Hmm. I'd have to see your thoughts on this, this particular one, if it's good. I want to know what you think. Whirlwind Scorpius is in here, and it has the Scorpius missile launcher, which we went over before. Um, and it's just the Scorpius. It's really, 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 really solid. The Whirlwind Helios isn't in here. The Helios is just gone. Uh, the Vindicator Laser Destroyer is in here. If you're building a Vindicator, just build the Laser Destroyer. Just get four LAS cannons, stick them together, and put it on the front of the damn thing. It's such a better vehicle compared to the other one. Um, so it has a volley fire at heavy 3 at 36 inch range, strength 9, AP minus 3, D3 plus 3. Or it has the overcharged fire, which is again, 36, heavy 3, strength 10, AP minus 4, 6 damage. Uh, each time an unmodified, say, uh, unmodified hit roll of 1 is rolled, um, it causes one mortal wound. But overall, it is just a better vehicle to the Vindicator, in my opinion. Just... The Vindicator is okay. It, it's garbage. It's like literally the worst Space Marine tank. The Guard do it better. Dreadnought Drop Pod made it. Honestly, surprised. Can it carry a Siege Dreadnought? Um, if your army is Battleforged, then each Dreadnought model that has a wound characteristic of 9 or less. So no, it cannot carry the Leviathan. I don't even think it can carry the Derrideo. Let's see. Can it carry a Derrideo? I mean, there's no point to it, but... That one has a wound characteristic of 14. This one has a wound characteristic of 9. And I think the Derrideo has a wound characteristic of 12. Yeah, no, can't carry a Derrideo. So it just carries the little dreadnoughts, the relics, uh, contemptors, the, um... I can't carry the chaplain dreadnought because that thing's gone. Um, but yeah. Dreadnought drop pods. Not really that good considering dreadnoughts are just firing platforms at this point. Uh, Terex Pattern Termite, uh, it's a space marine thing now, question mark? It, it's just space marine now? 
You literally took one of the best transports away from the Astrom, not the Astromil Tarm, the, uh, the, uh, the Mechanicus by doing this. Uh, okay, let's read it. Um, boo -boo 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 -boo, 14 wounds. Uh, this model has a transport capacity of 12 uh, character infantry models. It cannot transport jump pack terminators, primaris, wolfen, or centurions. Um, so it's completely useless unless you're transporting tack marines, uh, assault marines, vanguard veterans without uh, jump packs. Death Company without jump packs, but Death Company with jump packs are just infinitely better. Um, the hell is this thing transporting? Because uh, command squads and veteran squads are gone, so you can't just pop up with a bunch of Maltas. Uh, tactical support squads are only in 30k, and if you pop up with a Devastator squad with like heavy flamers, I, I guess it's okay? It just seems kind of bad. It's really disappointing that it's a... Uh, it's a Space Marine vehicle. Like, that's the worst selection it could put in. That honestly pisses me off. Hey, the Xiphon made it. Uh, the Storm Eagle gunship made it. Storm Eagles are pretty decent. I'm just going to try to speed through the things that I don't really care about. I am sorry. Fire Raptor gunship, it made it. Uh, this thing is insanely good. Uh, it has twin auto cannons, uh, twin Avenger bolt cannons, quad heavy bolters. This thing's got it all. Um, is equipped with the Avenger bolt cannon, two twin auto cannons, two twin Hellstrike missile launchers, which I think you want to switch out the Hellstrike missile launcher. Um, I mean, they're okay. Actually, pretty good. The Typhoon made it, or the Typhon made it. Which is kind of cool. That's the Lord of War. Uh, the Cerberus made it, which is the Lord of War. What about the Spartan? Hey, the Spartan made it. Let's see if it's any good. Uh, 20 wounds, so I actually think it went down. Let's compare it to its old one. So here's its old stats. It has 20 wounds. Uh, it has this weird thing, which I never enjoyed. Um, okay, has all of its weapons. Can take a bunch of options. Uh, its new one is much smaller. Its abilities are... Uh, Angels of Death, that and that. So it had Explode, Power of the Machine Spirit, uh, which doesn't matter anymore. Smoke Launchers, it still has for Smoke Screen, but I think that's a stratagem now. Uh, it does have Machine Spirit, so it's still there. Um, Steel Behemoth, which doesn't matter anymore because that's an obsolete rule. Okay, has all of its options. Uh, weapon Skill... 5 plus, strength, toughness, 8, leadership, 9, 2 plus, yeah, it's pretty much carbon copy, attacks, 8, now 6, why did it go down in attacks? Uh, it also went up in points. Um, okay, so that's annoying. So it went up in points, it has its crushing tracks, which is strength 8, because strength user, uh, AP minus 2, D3 damage, uh, and at 6 attacks instead of 8 attacks, which is... Really, really, really annoying. Um, has its laser destroyer, its quad las cannons, its crushing tracks. Uh, this model's uh, two quad las cannons may replace with two laser destroyers. Uh, laser destroyer, as always, is 36 inch range, heavy three, strength 10, AP minus four, D3 plus three. I think I would actually take the quad las cannons for four shots. Uh, in my own opinion, I think more shots is better. So that's just me. Um, but the fact that it went up in price annoys me. Uh, can't support, can't transport Primaris units for absolutely no reason. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a Spartan. It's just as disappointing as always. It's like the coolest looking bad unit in 40k, in my opinion. It has a lot of last cannon shots. It has a twin heavy bolter. Actually, it doesn't have its twin heavy bolter. Yeah, it has its twin heavy bolter, but it's just disappointing. Fellblade is in the same category. It's it's bad. Um, not a core unit, so it doesn't benefit from anything. So now this thing can't even reroll. It went up in points, can't reroll, can't do anything, has bad shoes, looks terrible. Okay, 
so we have the Falchion and the Australian. Get it? Get it? Get it? I just, I love calling it that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that's going to tick somebody off. Uh, because every time I pronounce something wrong or slightly off, it annoys people. Like when I pronounce Yagatayan instead of Jagatai Khan, because that's not the way Mongols pronounce their language. It's Yagatai. Anyway, Macedon is in here. I'm hoping the Triceratops is in here, as well as like the Dragon Zord. You know, this way we can form the Power Ranger thing. God, I haven't seen Power Rangers in forever. Thunderhawk gunship can't transport Primaris. <gasps> Wait a minute, it can. Oh yeah, this was the only old model that could transport Primaris. So this model has a transport capacity of 30 cap uh, chapter infantry or chapter bike units. Uh, each Wolfen, Terminator, Mark X Gravis, and Jump Pack unit take up two spots. Uh, a Primaris Jump Pack unit model takes up three spots. Um, each Centurion or Biker model takes up three slots. A Primaris Biker model takes up a space of four slots. I mean, they are pretty chunky. But an attack bike takes up the, ex the exact same room as a regular bike. So you could just dump off a ton of bikes. <laughs> I think that's funny. Um, so it does have hard to hit uh, hover jet and supersonic. It explodes because everything good does. Colossal flyer distance is always measured to the model's hull. So that's kind of cool because unlike flyers where you measure to the base, uh, this thing you measure to its actual hull itself. Um, Thunderhawk Heavy Cannon is 48 inches, heavy 2d6, strength 8, AP minus 2, d3 plus 2 blast. Oof, that's nasty. Hellstrike Missile Battery is 72 inch, heavy 4, strength 8, AP minus 3, 3 damage. I can see this thing seeing tournament play again. Um, so if you don't know, uh, back in early 8th edition, before they made the boots on the ground rules, they had a, uh, a list that was Gilliman and like six Storm Ravens or five Storm Ravens or four Storm Ravens, however many it made it up to the amount of points. Um, because it was three Storm Ravens, the other types of Storm Raven. Um, then they replaced it when they made boots on the ground. But a Thunderhawk, because it was a super heavy, still counted as being on the ground for no reason. So you'd have a Thunderhawk, Gilliman, and two Storm Ravens as a list, and it was crazy. And honestly, I love that list because it's ridiculous. Also, a Thunderhawk is too big to fit into deployment zones, so it's one of those things where you and your opponent have to agree or talk to the tournament TO beforehand and just be like, hey, my model has to hang halfway off the table because it's gigantic, so uh, what do I do? Um, now technically it's destroyed, but no one would ever do that to you unless they're like a super rules lawyer kind of jerk. Alright, Thunderhawk Cluster Bombs is pretty cool. Again, I can see the, I can see this thing hitting tournament play. It has 30 wounds. It has a ballistic skill. Uh, not a ballistic skill, a weapon skill of 6 plus, so I'm just imagining this thing just hitting you. It can move up to 50 inches, which, if you don't know, is an entire board. Uh, then the Soka Pattern Stormbird is in here. Why is this? Hey, it has void shields. Uh huh. So this is how void shields work in this game. Or now. I was wondering this one. This thing doesn't have a void shield. It's too small. But the Soka Pattern Stormbird or the Sokobliet Stormbird, uh, has void shields. All right, let's see. Uh, this model has two void shields. Each void shield has three shield points. When this model has any void shields, it has a five plus invulnerable save against ranged attacks. Each time a saving throw is failed the mo uh, for this model against a ranged attack, if it has any void shields, it does not suffer any damage. Instead, each of the points is inflicted to one of the void shields, losing one shield point. Uh, once a void shield has lost uh, a shield point, it must continue to lose shield points uh, due to any further damage inflicted until it collapses. Each time 
an attack causes a void shield to reduce to zero points. That void shield collapses. This model loses that void shield and any excess damage inflicted by that attack is lost. And void shields can never be used to prevent mortal wounds, such as wounds inflicted on this model's void shields causing that void shield that model to lose wounds as normal. So yeah, it just goes bypasses it. Um, which is weird because lightning can be stopped by force fields in 40k. Um, in the uh, RPGs and things like that, but I guess it's a balancing balancing thing. At the start of your command phase, this model has a void shield that is fewer than three shield points remaining. That void shield is restored to three shield points. Holy crap, this thing plus a tech priest, uh, tech marine is hilarious. Uh, does this thing have machine spirit? It does. It's void shielding, it's a relic, it's a Suka Bliet Stormbird. Um, yeah, this thing, this thing is hilarious. But I don't think it has too many weapons. Three health strike missile battery. Uh, with health strike missile batteries, Three twin heavy bolters and four twin las cannons. It's got a lot of guns, but for a fourteen hundred dollar model, I expect that it has forty wounds. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy. I like that. I have got all tarantulas. I need you like tarantulas. Only three command, uh, three power. They're dirt cheap. Um. Unit contains three models, so this thing's already better than the quad launchers. Uh, it has a no weapon skill, has a ballistic skill of 4+, plus, though, uh, and it's a fortification, so it's bad. Um, but it's kind of cool that it's there. So I'm not going to go into it because it's a fortification, no one's going to use it. And then we go into the point values, and we move on to the next part of this book, the Grey Knights, because they took... Why is it called the Banisher? This is the Proteus. I will fight you. They change this thing's name. And also, this is where the Repressor would be if they had one. I'm mad at this. I'm not even gonna look at Grey Knights. Screw you, Grey Knights. I don't even care about your Thunderhawk. It's cool that you got a Thunderhawk. It's actually really, really, really cool that you got a Thunderhawk. Now give the Thunderhawk to the sisters. Hey look, the Death Corps Creek. So from what I remember, they got rid of the Marshal uh, on Horsey Horse, and they got rid of the uh, Grenadiers, which is just a, a command squad, at, no, not a command squad, a special weapon squad that had grenade launchers that wounded on a four up, I think, or just a bunch of grenades. Um, I fought them a few times and Death Corps Creek kind of suck. Like, that's their biggest weakness. They look cool to some people. I The French officer look has always been kind of cool to me. Uh, I like that, their German name and then their French aesthetic is really, really, really nice. Uh, even their helmet, and yes, even their helmet, don't argue with me on this, I've checked it multiple times. Yes, even the helmet and the gas mask. It is French, don't argue. I know you're gonna get mad and you're typing right now, so stop it, stop it, stop it. Did you stop? Good. So, I'm wondering if they actually have rules. Oh yeah, Creed, Cult of Sacrifice. Uh, each time a combat attrition test, yep, they have the terrible one. Yep. They have the one where if they fail a morale test on a four plus, they don't fail it. Um, which is completely useless. <laughs> um. It's actually, it's sad that they're one of the worst guardsmen because the Cult of Sacrifice could be like uh, something similar to that of, I, I don't know what's going by, but something similar to that of like the Noise Marines where they shoot one last time or throw a grenade one last time before they die. And that would be really cool. And they should have a, um, a cheaper troop choice that is just uh, the, granite, the actual uh, guardsmen themselves and they should have, you know, their Death Riders and everything, but I'm not even sure if they have those. Oh, they do. They have the Death Rider Command Squad, which is kind of cool. They still are pretty decent. Um, they're Strength User now, so Strength 3 on their Hunting Lances. I remember that being Strength 4 at some point. 
I remember the lance being plus one strength. I think that was in 6th edition. Uh, then they have the Savage Claws, which is kind of cool. And I think they're armed with uh, frag grenades. And they're hunting lads and lads pistols, yep. So you do get a plethora of weapons to use with them, but they all are kind of terrible. Um, the Death Corps Krieg, back in the day, this was a good army. Like, back in 5th, 6th edition, this was a solid army for guardsmen. Nowadays, it's bad. It's very bad. And that's what sucks about it, and I feel bad for Death Corps Krieg fans, uh, because they're so adamant that they have, like, the best-looking guardsmen and everything, which is kind of true. GW's guardsmen look like garbage. Um, they're due for an update soon, I hope. But... It's just, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of just there. They're, they're bad. Um, uh, Death Rider Squadron Commands, um, do they have options? They could take a bolt pistol or plasma pistol for their leader. Um, so they didn't get rid of the Field Marshal. That's interesting. They just changed his name. Okay. All right. They changed his name. Uh, the Combat Engineer Squad. I always like these guys because they have the gas bombs, which I feel like such as a battle should have the Phosphex grenades. Um, but that's just me. They have their shotguns, which are Assault 3. Their shotguns are better than Space Marine shotguns. That's pretty good. Uh, but 12 inch range. And then they have the Mole Launcher. So they got to keep a lot of their cool stuff. Uh, strength 5, AP minus 1, uh, 1 damage and blast. It's bad. I mean, I would... That's heavy D6, though, but it's not as good as, like, a missile launcher. No, it's actually... No, it's good. It's better than a missile launcher. Hmm. And it can target you instead of not visible. Okay, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. They're also to only two power level. That's really good. The Death Rider Squad. Uh, how many can this go up to? Uh, ten dudes. That's pretty good. Uh, they have the last pistols, and the only option is for their sergeant to replace a, uh, replace into a bolt or a plasma pistol. So again, it's okay. Hmm. The horses are stronger than them. I still think the hunting lines should be strength four. Strength plus one, AP minus one, one damage. Or at least plus one on the charge. That's not out of the question. Each time this model in the unit would lose a wound, uh, roll a d6 on a 5+, plus. the wound is not lost. Okay, so they're augmented mounts, they're dog horses, which are very similar to the dog horses of the uh, Mechanicus. Um, and yes, they are like dog ho horses, it's really weird. I really like the combination. Um, they're honestly pretty intense. But again, you're stuck with that terrible tactic. Like, imagine if these guys had the Catacan um, uh, detachment ability, where they got plus one strength. They would be really good. But since they don't, they're kind of bad. The Cardon is in here, which is pretty cool. It's a heavy support choice. Um, it's got a weapon skill of five plus. Blisk still a 4+. plus. Okay. 4, 5, and 6. Uh, it's not terrible. It has 12 wounds. Uh, can take a, a plethora of different weapons, which is pretty decent. Uh, the Cyclops Demolition Vehicle is in here. Um, and keep in mind, there's only very few things that are strictly Krieg. And the horses are, unfortunately, strictly Krieg. So no more Death Riders for everybody, just Kriegers. Which I guess is cool. It, it makes their army unique. So I do like that. It's kind of like Space Wolves having Thunderwolf Cavalry, but other Space Marines not having Thunderwolf Cavalry. It's kind of their thing. Heavy Mortars are still in here. Um, they're just as good as they were. Cyclops Demolition Vehicles. Uh, is it still exploding on a 4+. plus? Uh, when this unit is selected to shoot with a Cyclops Demolition Chart, you can target and resolve an attack against every visible unit within range, friendly and enemy. Uh, after that unit shoots with the Cyclops demolition charge, uh, it is destroyed. In addition, it cannot, um, cannot do objective stuff. 
Anyway, uh, so range is six inches, so it's six inches all around it. Heavy 2D, six strength nine, AP minus two, D3 damage, and it looks like it's automatic. I selected to shoot with its cyclonic, its cycloptic demolition charge. Hmm. Compact. <laughs> I love that this thing counts as infantry for the purposes of uh, transport. Um, and then explodes. Uh, when this model is destroyed, except for uh, it is destroyed after shooting the Cyclops Demolition Charge, roll a d6, and then it has the same explode result, which is pretty decent. Uh, it has four wounds now, which I think is pretty good. I think that's the same as before, but it's just good to have. Uh, can they be taken in a squadron? No, it's just one, as a heavy support choice. Uh, three power level is pretty cheap. I don't know. The fact that it explodes automatically is really good. I think they're worth it. I really think they're worth it. Armageddon Pattern Basilisk. I don't think there's any difference between the Armageddon Basilisk and the new Basilisk. Uh, but we can get a uh, an updated version of what the Basilisk is going to look like. If you don't know, the Armageddon Pattern Basilisk is the enclosed Basilisk uh, versus the regular one. The same with the Medusa. But this will give us a good idea of what to expect for the Basilisk in, seventh, uh, in ninth edition. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Can take um, Heavy Flamer, Hunter Killer, Storm Bolter, or Heavy Stubber. Uh, vehicle Squadron, it counts as a... Yeah, just, it's a squadron. Um, how many of them? One to three. That makes sense. Uh, and has Explode, and doesn't tell me what its weapon does. Which I think is interesting that it doesn't tell me how much damage it does, so you need the other book to figure out how much damage this weapon does. Uh, the Medusa Siege Cannon, it tells us, is 36 inch range. Heavy D6, strength 10, AP minus 3, D6 damage. Blast and it can target uh, units that are not visible. I always thought Medusas were underrated. I like them because of their high strength and just amount of damage they can output. The Malkador and the Malkador Annihilator, I love the Malkadors. Um, they're such beautiful tank designs for 40k. Uh, once we get the book that has the Malkador in it, we're going to be covering it for Everything Wrong With series. Um, I, I honestly, I can't wait to cover this vehicle. It is such a cool vehicle. And it's a heavy support choice, and it's basically, it, it's not even basically, it, it just is a bigger version of a Lehman Rush. And it's a more accurate version of a Lehman Rush for a tank design. But it has 18 wounds versus the Lehman Rushes, uh, which I think is, uh, 12 wounds if I'm not mistaken. Might be 14. It's still Toughness 8, which makes it insanely hard to kill, like the Lehman Ross. Um, Malkador is equipped with two auto cannons, a battle cannon, and a heavy flamer, which is really cool that it has two auto, uh, auto cannons on it. Uh, this model's two auto cannons can be replaced with two heavy bolters or heavy las cannons. Uh, I would take the heavy, I would take the, uh, the auto cannons in this case. Uh, when in doubt, a marine killer is always the best weapon. Because um, hitting on 4+, plus and only getting two shots with the last cannon is not worth it, in my opinion. But getting um, four shots with the auto cannons, you're going to hit twice, kill one, is way better than hit once, possibly kill one. Um... This model may replace one of its auto cannons or last cannons. Uh, this model's heavy bolter can be replaced with an auto cannon or last cannon. Does that mean this thing can have three auto cannons? Holy crap, that is a lot of auto cannons. I would definitely give this thing three auto cannons. Um, do, 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 do. But what is its main weapon? Oh yeah, it just has the battle cannon. Which also means that uh, if they word it correctly, you might be able to give this thing the Relic Battle Cannon. Um, if they don't say, uh, what, in the new book, for the new, uh, Imperial Guard, once it comes out, if they don't say, uh, a Lehman Russ's, uh, Battle Cannon, and just a Battle Cannon, 
You could replace this one with the Relic Battle Cannon and it would be amazing. The Malkador Annihilator is the same thing, but it has a, a Malkador Twin Las Cannon, which apparently is different. It's exactly the same, but it has a different name. Alrighty. Then the Malkador Defender is the same thing, but it has the, um, the big siege gun. Um, then we have the Earthshaker Carrier Batteries, which is not uh, strictly to uh, Krieg, which is interesting to note. Uh, one to three of these things, and it's a it's a basilisk. They're okay. Artillery and crew. Uh, each, each Earthshaker cannon and its crew are treated as single models for all role purposes. So if you target the crew, uh, you hit them on hit them and wound them as though they are toughness three. Uh, but the gun itself, you hit as though it's toughness uh, six. And they must re remain within one inch of the of the cannon. Uh, this means that the crew models can be targeted or attacked separately and that visible and all ranged measured to the Earthshaker carriage models and not the crew models. Uh, this unit cannot advance, it can never be eligible to charge or perform heroic interventions, and it cannot make a pile-in movement or consolidation. It's stuck where it is. They're okay. They're really cool looking. Like, if you need a thematic battle, you bring these things out. Are they good? No, not really. Uh, they're a cheaper version of a Basilisk. Uh, they're, I think they're a cheaper version of this. They're a slightly cheaper version of the Basilisk, which is pretty good. Uh, and I think... But it's massive weaknesses now that you can just kill its crew. Uh, so you hide this thing behind terrain that's six inches high, and then it just fires constantly because it doesn't need a lot of sight. Uh, the heavy quad launcher, it's a heavy quad gun, it's pretty decent, not great. I wouldn't take this thing for a heavy support choice. I'd prefer a tank because I am a proper guard player. It's tanks or airplanes and I'm waiting to get to the Avenger Strike Fighter. I'm waiting to get there. I'm super excited to get there. Uh, the bombards, I never like these things outside of Apocalypse games. It's cool that it's a heavy support choice and it has uh, 12 wounds. And it has a 240 inch weapon, so you can shoot the neighboring tables, uh, even if they're properly six foot away from each other. Uh, so that way we can maintain social distancing and wear masks and sanitize our tables. While we're playing this game of 40K during a pandemic, we still have to take this pandemic extremely seriously, everybody. Uh, don't touch your opponent's models. Let them remove their models. Touch your own models. Bring a Lysol cleaner to clean off your models. Make sure it doesn't damage the models themselves or the train. Clean off the table. Make sure everything is clean. Maintain, like, personal hygiene. Stay safe. They're still Nurgle out there. And we are loyal Imperial citizens and we will do our damnedest to stop Nurgle. <sighs> if you're a Nurgle player, I mean, still follow these guidelines. The Malkador Infernus. This one, this one is uh, slightly different. It has a giant flamethrower on it that looks like a super soaker. It's an 18-inch flamer, uh, heavy 3d6, strength 7 AP, minus 2, 2 damage, auto hits. This thing is extremely underrated in the amount of firepower it deals. Like, this thing is crazy good, especially for a, um, a guard regiment. I actually want to do a guard regiment where... Uh, my Chimeras have two fl heavy flamethrowers. I have three Hellhounds with two he the flamers and the uh, the the big gun on it, um, the really good flamer that's on it. Then I want to do three Malkador and Furnaces, <laughs> just because it would be all flamers, and it would be amazing. So this model is equipped with two heavy stubbers and an Inferno gun. We already read the Inferno gun, um, and it's two. Uh, it's two heavy stubbers can be replaced with two auto cannons, which is what you do. Uh, two heavy bolters, which is also a good choice. Two heavy flamethrowers, an amazing choice, and or two las cannons. Um, this model can be equipped with a hundred kilo missile and can take a storm bolter or one heavy stubber. Um, yeah, rules as written. I wonder if you can get away with buying a heavy stubber and then replacing it. I. I know you can't, rules as intended, but rules as written, it looks like you can. Because it says, this model's two heavy stubbers, 
So if you have three on there and replace it, anyway, I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not gonna get into the fact that with poor wording, you can actually get away with a lot of dirty tricks in this game. Like the fact that in this edition, and here's my unpainted uh, exorcist tank, you can technically deploy a tank like this, and there is nothing stopping you. Uh, I actually think they, they might have addressed that in 9th edition, saying that the treads have to be down, but I'm, I'm not 100% on that, and I think it's really funny if it's not. Uh, Reaper laser destroyer batteries. Uh, these are pretty decent, um, but again, I wouldn't... They're good to hide. Um, because they're artillery and... Ooh, they are vehicles, so they can move and fire. Hmm. It's three per squad, so that is... Um... What? Nine shots with last cannons. Or super last cannon. So that's five hits. Uh, three going through. So it's, if you take three of them, you're killing a tank a turn. Um, which is pretty good. Depending on the tactic, of course, uh, you might actually get some more. Thunderers, these things are kind of cute. I like them. Uh, where's the aircrafts? Tank hunters are okay, but hitting on fours is not great. There it is! Yes! The Avenger Strike Fighter. My favorite aircraft, aside from the... Oh, and they put it across in the Arvis Lighter! Oh, I'm so happy about that. Thank you, GW. You know me all too well. You know that I just want to look at my two favorite aircrafts. Um, so the Avenger Strike Fighter has its Burt gun. It's... Uh, oh, they nerfed it. They took away its... Wow! They nerfed the hell out of this thing! Holy crap! So this thing was actually Ballistic Skill 3, um, which is huge. So it has its Avenger Bolt Cannon, which is Heavy 10, Strength 6, AP minus 2, 2 damage. And an Avenger is equipped with a, the Avenger Bolt Cannon, two, a Heavy Stubborn, 2 Laz Cannons. And now doesn't have options. Where's its Hell Strike Missiles? Where's its Missile Launchers? Where's all of its options? You sell the options! Give me the damn option! Oh my... Mmm, choice words that I want to say that would get me demonetized about this, which is really, 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 really annoying. And I hate it, because I have three of these damn things. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. There's a boss pattern lightning, which is the lightning that comes in the um, the kit that I was showing during the talk about the lightning. Uh, it's kind of funny that they got rid of the lightning originally uh, and changed it out with this thing. Um, lightning health strike rack, um, 72 inches strength, or heavy two strength eight, AP minus two, D6 plus two damage. So that's pretty decent weapon, not terrific. Uh, it's gonna hit once. Um, does it have multiples of these? Is equipped with two last cannons. Wait, it doesn't even have this weapon. Oh, you have to, you have to equip this thing separately. So does that mean this thing has options? Oh, that's so dumb. All right, let's see what they did to the Arvis slider. Probably made it garbage. Um, Web Skill 6, Ballistic Skill 4, Strength uh, 5, Toughness 6, uh, did they at least, okay, you're, at least you got 14 wounds. Um, it no longer has any of its weapons. This thing used to be able to be equipped with two weapons and it has the equip slots under its wings. <sighs> I'm still, mmm, this. 
this. Choice words. It doesn't even have, okay, it has supersonic and hard to hit and airborne. Uh, see the Valkyrie's data sheet in the Codex Astra Militarum. So since that codex is not out, that technically means it has no rules, but you're supposed to use the last edition codex on this. So maybe it'll be better in the new edition. Maybe. All right, there's the Thunderbolt, the Vulture. The Vulture is uh, a, usable, um, a usable aircraft. It is, let's take a look. Blisk Seal 4, it can fly up to 45 inches. It's got the Vulture Gatling Cannon, which is heavy 20. Strength 5, AP 0, damage 1. Uh, I think it actually has two of these things. A Vulture Gun Ship is equipped with Heavy Bolter, two multipod rockets, and a Vulture Heavy Strike Rack. Or Hell Strike Rack. My bad. Uh, this model's two rocket pods can be replaced with the Gatling Cannons, which is what you do. So this thing has 40 shots, uh, which makes it actually a viable choice because you'll hit 20 times. And out of those 20 times, you'll wound 10 times if you're tough. If the thing that you're shooting at is toughness five, uh, I think it's uh, 20, 15 times against anything that is toughness four and lower. Um, so that's pretty good. I I hate that. I'm still mad. I'm still mad. Vendetta gunship. It just has the three. Doesn't it actually have the three last cannons. I, uh, yeah, it looks like it does. Yeah, it has three twin last cannons, so six shots with last cannon, so hitting three times, wounding about two and a half, so pretty good. Um, all right. The Trojan support vehicles. These are transport vehicles. That's interesting. The Hades breaching drill is a uh, transport for them, which is kind of neat. Uh, how much is a transport? Uh, boop -da boop -da boop -da boo Engineering squad, whirling blades, explodes, subterranean assault. After deployment, you can set up a unit up and underground instead of setting them up on the battlefield. Okay, so they come in afterwards, which is kind of super neat. I like that. I like that a lot. If you, ooh, wait. Uh, during deployment, you can set up this unit and up and underground. Okay, then select one that is actually from its army. Because sometimes you can get away with deploying different things from different armies if you share the same regiment. Or if you share, or if it's poorly worded. Uh, then you have the super heavies, the Macarius, the Macarius Vanquisher. I'm not going to get into them because I don't know much about them. The Vulcan, the Predator, um, the Serastus, the Minotaur, uh, these are all just super heavy platforms. The Marauder Bomber. Ooh, the Marauder Bomber and Destroyer in here. Um, there's, a, there's a fair few aircrafts missing, which I think is interesting. Okay. The Marauder Bomber. This thing is gigantic, by the way. I assume it has the super heavy rule. It actually doesn't. It doesn't have the same rule as the Thunderhawk. It's slightly smaller than the Thunderhawk. So, interesting to see that it doesn't have that. So, it's equipped with two heavy bombs, the Marauder, uh, Marauder two heavy bombers, uh, Marauder twin LAS cannons. So, I don't know what a Marauder twin LAS cannon is, but I would like to know. It doesn't tell me. Um, oh wait, yep, there it is. It's a strength, it's just a LAS cannon. It's a two, uh, just, just a LAS cannon. Uh, the twin heavy bolters, uh, oh, it has heavy bolters, my bad. Um, I assume this thing was just a bomber. Uh, heavy six, strength five, AP minus one, two damage. Um, yep, that's just a heavy bolter for you. Um, then it has its heavy bombs. Uh, once per turn, uh, if the bearer has any bombs remaining, it can drop one of them immediately uh, after the bearer has moved, uh, you can select one point in the path, yada, 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 yada. You just select one thing as you go over it. Um, roll a d6 for each unit. Um, and subtracting one of their character. Excluding vehicles and monsters. On a, four, on a four to five, that unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a six, that unit suffers d6 mortal wounds. Uh, heavy bombs can only 
can only be used once per battle. And it's only equipped with two of these things? Oh. Wow, you're not even a bomber for every turn. You're a bomber for two turns. That's terrible. Okay, this thing also has heavy bombs, which is probably going to make it better than this one. Uh, Marauder Destroyer is equipped with the Marauder Nose Auto Cannons, the Marauder Twin Assault Cannons, the Marauder Twin Heavy Bolters, and Heavy Bomb. So just a heavy bomb. So just one of them. Which is half as good as the other one. Alright, so it has the Health Strike Missile Act, the, no the Heavy 12 Auto Cannons, which are honestly amazing. Um... Twin Assault Cannons, it has heavy 12 shots from that. Yeah, the, why would you not take the Marauder Destroyer over the Bomber? Like, what's the, what's the purpose of taking the Bomber over the Destroyer? Just get the Destroyer, it's better. Alright, then we have the Stormblade. The Tarantula Battery has um, been retrofitted to be uh, um, Fortification. That's the word I'm looking for. Then we have all of their points and everything. Uh, if you want, just pause the video right here and you can get all of this stuff. Look at that. Wow, sir. Gee willikers. It's only going to take like three weeks for this to be, or two weeks to be in Battle Scribed. So I don't really mind. All right, moving on. Inquisition data sheets. Um, no sisters, of course. So we have Solomon Loke, who is weird because he's dead. I don't know why that they continue with this model. He's actually just a radical inquisitor that's terrible. Um, he's cheap, I guess. Hector Rex is in here. Uh, he's got his Masterwork Bolt Pistol instead of his Master Crafted Bolt Pistol. Um, and his other weapon is a melee weapon at Strength 1, AP minus 3, D, um, 2 damage. Each time an attack is made with this weapon against a demon unit, if that attack successfully wounds that target, it suffers one mortal wound in addition to any other damage. Ooh. That's pretty good. Uh, what, four attacks? That's a chance of dealing four mortal wounds to a demon from this guy? Just for free is pretty interesting. Very situational, but pretty interesting. Authority of the Inquisition, Quarry, Unquestionable Wisdom, Teleport Strike, and Psychic Hood are all in there. Uh, the Sanctic Shield, he has a four plus invo save, adds one to his, and then he has, um, he actually has a Storm Shield, which is cool. Uh, D6 on a 5 plus, that wound would not be lost. And he blocks mortal wounds. Um, the Psyker can attempt to manifest two psychic powers in your psychic phase and attempt to deny two. Wow, Hector Rex is a monster. Holy crap, he's actually really good. He also has a Terminator keyword because he is in Terminator armor. Because humans can wear Terminator armor. If you need proof, here he is. Solomon Loke is in Terminate Armor. Uh, Inquisitor Sabathiel is in uh, uh, the Grey Knight Terminator, the Aris Pattern Terminator Armor or something like that. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it. But she can field Terminators. Um, be fielded in Terminate Armor. Uh, let's see. What? Inquisition. Uh, Automalius. Literally the best is Automalius. Uh, wow, that's it. Huh, they lost that other dude. And that one guy with all of his retinue. Uh, that used to be Solomon Loke, but... Hmm. He's Odo Xenos, which is kind of cool. Huh. Okay. Adeptus Custodians, we have the Custodian Guard. Um, with... I, I don't want to try to pronounce that. Um... They got the different types of spears. So, they look like custodians. Yep, they're custodians. The spear and melee. Well, their, their new spear. Strength plus one, so strength six, AP minus three, D3 damage. Uh, and the pyrate spear, which is the melta spear, um, is the exact same thing. So one is the flamer spear, one is the melta spear. Um... Oh, no, wait, no, the Andrasite Spear is not. 18 inches, Assault 1, Strength 5, AP minus 3, 3 damage. 
That's actually pretty good for hitting on twos. Uh, and then he has the Melta shot, which I want to get some of these guys with the Melta ones. They're super, super, super cool. Because um, it's uh, strength 8, AP minus 4, D6 damage. And then it has the Melta rule. Um, yeah, they're just, they're just a solid troop choice. And then you have the uh, Sigmentarum. Uh, I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce that. Sig it tith tarum. I I think I could be wrong. Um, before selecting targets, select one or both of the profiles below. This is what makes these guys extremely good. Is they can fire both of these, so they get a total of four shots, and their shots either deal two or three damage. These are excellent at killing marines and killing them dead. Um. And if you do shoot, excuse me, if you do shoot both, you get a minus one to hit. And they can be equipped with the Mesocordia. These guys can be equipped with the Mesocordia, or the Mega Accordion, as I call them. Um, oh, wow, there's the Equilin Terminators. I have these guys. I love these guys. Uh, let's see. The Lindstrom Storm Bolters is what I have them equipped with, which is Rapid Fire 2, Strength 5. Uh, AP minus one, one damage. I might switch that out. Uh, especially if we can get those in... Oh no, the Inferno Fire Pikes are... They take up both hands. Ooh. These guys are... By the way, everything in the Custodians is just good. There is nothing bad in Custodians. Except for... Like, arguably, the worst thing in Custodians is these guys. But they're also amazing. And maybe the Wardens, but they're also really, really, really good. It's kind of like saying there's a bad unit in Space Marines. Yeah, there's a bad unit. It's not as good as ever the things, but it's still good on its own right. Um, so, I have mine equipped with uh, the Power Fist and the Storm Bolter, which I think is still a legal configuration. Contains four models with a power rating of 22, every model after that. Uh, they're equipped with the Storm Bolter and the Power Gauntlet. Um, the power gauntlet is strength times two, so strength 10, AP minus four, two damage, which is why I field them like that. They just literally kill anything in their path. Um, their lightning claw is pretty interesting. It's strength six, AP minus two, one damage, uh, and it gets an additional attack. Um, the fire pike, I don't want the fire pikes on them. That's just me though. That's strictly me. I like the power fists that don't have a minus to hit. The Gladius Dreadnought, um, which is cool because I have this guy and I love fielding him. And you actually just saw him in a battle report. Um, so he has his Warblade for shooting. It's 2d6, strength 6, AP minus 1, 1 damage, and it automatically hits because it's a flamer. Uh, then he has his Warblade in melee, which is strength the user, so strength 7, not strength 8 anymore. AP minus 3, 3 damage. Um, and the Barrack can make d3 additional attacks with this weapon, so it's super useful. And the shield is a 4 plus invo save that gives this model a... Uh, oh, wow. It's not a storm shield. Uh, this model has a 4 plus invo save. Each time a melee attack is made against this model, subtract 1 from that hit roll. I really thought they were going to make that a storm shield. So, that's kind of interesting. Uh, unyielding Ancient. See Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought Data Sheet. Uh, he has a 5 plus invo save. Uh, and shrugs off damage on a 5 plus. And then he has Guardian Eternal. Each time an attack is allocated to this model, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that weapon to a minimum of one. So damage that deals two deals one instead. He explodes, just like me, um, when I saw that Arvis, that Arvis Lighter and the Avenger Strike Fighter. I do apologize about that. Contemptor uh, Achilles Dreadnought. Uh, this is the one with the spear, right? Um, yes it is. Yes it is. Yeah, the spear is good too. Like, there's no bad uh, Dreadnought. I think that this one is a bit better in my opinion, but that's strictly my opinion. It also looks cooler. Agamentus Custodians, these are the Jump Pack dudes, right? Yeah, these are Jump Pack dudes. Are these the... I never know if they're the Jump Pack dudes or the ones on jet bikes. Oh, bikers. Yeah, these are the jet bikes. So these are the other type of jet bikes you can take, um, which I think are slightly better than the other ones. 
because they can have the Twin Last Pulsar, which is a heavy 4 strength 8 AP minus 2 D3 damage weapon, um, which I think is really, really, really fantastic. But I don't think that they have a melee weapon, do they? Uh, every model is equipped with Lance from Bolt Cannon uh, and an Inceptor Lance. Okay, so they have the Lance. Oh, these guys are just better than the, um, than the current bikers. Huh. Well, the bikers have the missiles. But those missiles are anti-flyer. These guys can be anti-tank. Huh, these guys are just good. They both have their purposes. Vinatari, these are the flying monkeys. Um, okay. Sorry, I needed to take a drink real quick. Kinetic Destroyer is their pistol. Um, if you... Each time an attack is made with this weapon, an unmodified roll of a six scores one additional hit, which is kind of cool. It's essentially um, a Volkite weapon, but it's a s more stable version of a Volkite weapon. So it's pistol two. They can go up to six in a squad, so it's 12 shots with pistols. Uh, then they have the Vinatari Lance, uh, Kinetic Destroyer, and the Buckler. Oh, they have a Buckler. That's kind of cool. Um, plus one, so strength six, AP minus two, one damage. I don't think that's very good. Um, yeah, so why would you not, uh, oh, the buckler is a two plus. Ooh. Wait, shouldn't they have a two plus no matter what? They're infantry. And everybody else has a two plus. They don't have a two plus. That's weird. I don't like that. Um, yeah, these guys are just kind of bad. I don't like them. They're probably really good, and somebody's gonna be like, Oh, yes, yes, they're actually amazing, and if you use them with this exact strategy, you can't lose. You'll actually win your next five games. And I'm just gonna sit here and be like, Nido Mosquito, they look like flying monkeys from Wizard of Oz. The Pals Grav Attack, I have three of these things now, and I love them. Uh, 16 inches, weapon skill 6, ballistic skill 2+, plus, strength 5, toughness 6. Eight wounds, they're actually pretty decent, but also pretty balanced, as weird as that is to say. They also kept the fly keyword, but fly doesn't really do too much anymore. Um, actually, they can still fly over buildings and everything, unlike the, uh, the uh, what, what is it, Repulsor lost the fly abilities. Uh, then it has its twin blaze cannon, so burst and beam. So beam is heavy two, strength seven, AP minus four, three damage. If it hits a vehicle, it can reroll to wound, um, but I actually take the burst every time I take it because I use this thing for infantry clearing, uh, which it's not very good at, which is weird. Has a 5 plus invo save, and distance is always measured to its halt because it's a hover tank. Teleman Heavy Dreadnought took a nerf. Um, I think the, uh, which is the, the weapon that I equipped it with, uh, the Arcana Storm Cannon. So... Its beam is now only 36 inches instead of 48. It's um, heavy 2, strength 8, AP minus 4, 3 damage. Uh, each time an attack is made with this profile and targets a vehicle, you can reroll to wound. This thing is excellent at killing tanks dead very quickly. Uh, then we have its burst, which is heavy 6, strength 7, AP minus 2, 1 damage. I technically, every now and then, use that. I, I actually prefer the two shots that are guaranteed to kill a guy versus the... <clears throat> so the Teleman Dreadnought, we've seen his nerfs and everything in uh, the previous edition. And to be honest, he's still pretty much an auto-include into your Custodian army. Essentially, if you can afford him, get him. He's really, really, really good. Also, you want to know something interesting? Uh, some tidbits of lore. Uh, the Custodians are made from the uh, noble-born families of Terra, and they give up a son <clears throat> to the um, to Terra to have them be biotransferred and transformed. <clears throat> excuse me, to be transformed into uh, Custodians. Now, I would love, 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 love to see a story where a noble family doesn't have a son and the father is only capable of uh, producing women. So, that would be, that would be super cool. 
Anyway, that's just me ranting and raving and whatever. Um, because there's no law stating that they can't go through biotransference and be our bio, um, the bioalchemy that turns them into custodians. It's just that they're only taken from the firstborn, not the firstborn sons, the sons of uh, nobles on, on Terra. So what's funny is I also think that this code, this few pages is more than that's in the codex. Because we have, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, twelve options. Maybe thirteen. Yeah, thirteen. Thirteen different options. It's more than the codex. So this thing that you buy for sixty dollars has more in it than the codex does that you buy for forty. Or fifty, depending. So, we're on the next page. The glad, uh, the, the Calidus Grav Tank, thank you, Brain. Uh, it has its twin Arcanas Heavy Blaze Cannon, which I think is an amazing name for a weapon. Uh, it's heavy two, strength nine, AP minus four, D3 plus three damage uh, in its beam format. And each time it attacks a vehicle, uh, you reroll the damage roll, uh, the rune roll, which is really good. Or it has its burst, which is a heavy a 36 inch range, strength 7, AP, minus 2, 1 damage. And at 1 damage, I wouldn't take it if I'm shooting Space Marines, but if I'm shooting Guard or Sisters or Eldar or Tau, uh, infantry that is, I would be taking that. If I need to kill a battle suit, I would definitely take the beam. I'd actually take the burst to shoot at Tau uh, suits and watch them pass them off to drones. That way I'm not wasting a last cannon shot against a drone. Um, an essential last cannon shot. Um, just so you know, anything strength nine, I consider a last cannon. Um, I I know it's not. Trust me, I know. It's just it's just something I do. Uh, this tank is amazing. Fourteen inch movement has the fly keyword. Can fly above things. Um, has a five up invulnerable save. No longer do you get the minus two for assaulting a grab tank. So keep that in mind. Uh, can explode the Kronos Grav, uh, Grav Carrier, or Kronos, 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 however you pronounce it. Has a twin blaze accelerator cannon, or twin Arcanus blaze cannons as well, which again is the same as this one, but weaker? Twin Arcanus heavy blaze cannons, and this one is the Arcanus blaze cannons. Okay, so it's slightly weaker, um, but... Yeah, by quite a bit. This one's uh, strength 9, this one's strength 7. Still AP minus 4, 3 damage. Uh, so this one's not bad. And this one has the transport capacity, which is amazing. So 6 custodian infantry, which means that it's terminators and everything can go right into it. Um, so 6 terminators just popping out on the battlefield, uh, along with another squad of terminators just teleporting in. Amazing. Your opponent will be terrified. Then they have their flyers, which is cool that they're not super heavies. So I'm happy about that. The Orion Assault Dropship, uh, which has the Arcanus Heavy Beam Cannon, which we've gone over enough times. It has the Speculus, I think that's how you're supposed to pronounce it, but I call it the Spectacular Heavy Bolt Launcher just because it's hilarious. And the Twin Landstrom Bolt Cannons. So a good amount of weapons on this thing. Um, it's armed with two Arcanus Heavy Blaze Cannons, uh, two Twin Landstrom Bolt Cannons, two Spectacular Heavy Bolt Launchers. So this thing is packing a lot of shots. And again, if you have this thing, field it. It's so much fun. It's actually a really good flyer too. Uh, so you cannot declare a charge with this model because it's airborne. Has a supersonic keyword, uh, which is interesting that supersonic is in here. So this is more than likely going to be the new supersonic ruling uh, going into 9th edition. So each time a model makes a normal move, advance, or falls back, first pivot this model on the spot up to 90 degrees. Uh, this does not contribute to how far this model moves. And then the model, uh, then move the model straight forward. It cannot pivot again until um, after the initial pivot. So pivot once, fly. Or 90 degrees would be pivot, fly. Anyway. Um, what the hell is going on outside? Stop it. I'm filming. Jerks.
Okay, good. I didn't have to come out there and beat you up. I would. I got muscles. Anyway, uh, his new hard to hit rule, which is just subtract one. Uh, each time a ranged attack is made against this model, subtract one from the hit attacker's hit roll. It's kind of interesting that that also affects aircrafts. Um, Eclipse Shield has a 5 plus invulnerable save, it explodes, and it hover it has hover jets. Uh, in your command phase, this model can hover if it does so. It's uh, until the start of your next command phase, and its movement characteristic becomes 20, and it loses the airborne, hard to hit, and supersonic abilities. So, interesting. It can assault then. Uh, it also can drop off its dudes. Uh, this model has a transport capacity of 12 um, Adeptus Custodius Infantry models or 7 Adeptus Custodius Infantry uh, models and a Contemptor Achilles Dreadnought uh, or one Contemptor Gladius Dreadnought or one Venerable Contemptor Dreadnought model. Whew, that's a mouthful. This thing could drop a Dreadnought into the battlefield. It's essentially a souped up Storm Raven. So, interesting. Oh, also all of them have the shield host, which as of right now, they don't, and this is geared up for 9th edition, they don't have the whole garbage where aura abilities don't affect them. Oh wait, no they do, there's core. Oh, that's interesting, these are not core. I am so wrong, I, I apologize about that. So the heavy dreadnoughts no longer get the rerolls. So that's interesting. And this is not core. And then we have the Aeris dropship, or gunship. Um, I'm so used to saying dropship because these things fly down from space. Um, which has its firebombs and is crazy. I'm not going to get into it because I don't own the model. Let me get the mechanic case. Oh, you silly little robot man. Toaster thieves. I'm just imagining they would have an aneurysm if they actually saw a toaster work. Um, I have no idea what any of these units are, by the way. I have very little experience with uh, Adeptus Mechanicus units, so uh, please forgive me. Uh, so I'm just going to look at these things. If you know them, you can pause here, take a look at the data sheet, tell me about them. I would like that. Uh, these guys look like they're armed with, like, some sort of pistol that's also a... Oh, no, it's that lance thing that they have. What are these things? Let me let me take a look at these guys really quickly. Let me Google it. And, oh, you know what? I'll Google it off camera. Oh, they're Titan Guards. That's cool. See, here's the thing that I, I want for uh, knights and chaos knights in the future. Them to have the ability to take squires or them to have the ability of taking serfs, uh, because that fits with the theme of the knight household. Even the renegade and chaos knights it fits. And just give them a, a type of guardsman that just have sword and board. Like, they have a 5-up invo save and a power sword. Uh, similar to that of like a crusader squad, and it's just their troop choice. Or give them like, um, long rifles. Like, it's a bolt weapon, but it's in the shape of like a musket, so they're like the musketeers. I think that would be a lot of fun, and uh, it would fit the theme of the knights and everything. Um, so yeah, let's continue going through these. I I have no idea what I'm looking at. I literally I have such little experience with Skatari that yeah, the Admech that I I don't know what the hell I'm looking at. I'm not going to try to pretend that I know what I'm looking at. I strictly don't. Um, I know that I have a few of the Titan Guard guys, uh, so, and they're pretty big. Like, I got them in a trade, so I'm happy with that. Uh, they don't have core, so that's interesting. Um, these guys don't have core. Uh, these are for Titan Legions. Is this just... Adeptus Mechanicus. These are for Titans. Titan Legion, Forge World. So these are the Mars guys. Huh. That's really cool. Okay. I see how that's playing out. Alright, again, I am going to skip this. I do apologize. I, I don't know. Um, I do know knights. I do know knights. I have quite a few knights. I think I have five knights. So we have the Knight Astraeus. 
Um, this is the one with the giant Volkite gun and what was his other weapon? No, this is the weird one that has like the, the Mechanicus one. Um, it's also cool that they have their allegiance and their household as keywords. It also looks like an angry face right there. Um, yeah, this one is the weird one. It has the uh, Karanas mortar battery, uh, twin conversion beamer cannon, cannons, and titanic feet. This is the one I only see every now and then, um, and I battled it once in 8th edition. This is the Lancer. Oh, I love the Lancer so much. Lancer can move 14 inches, which is on average with knights. I actually think it's a little bit faster. This one's slow for a knight. Um, so Shock Lance is range 18, strength 6, or uh, heavy 6, strength 6, AP minus 1, D3 damage. Uh, pretty good marine killer, hopefully. Uh, in melee, uh, you select either the standard or charged attack. Um... And you can make do, 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 do. so the standard is uh, melee range, obviously strength plus six, so strength fourteen, AP minus four, six damage, or you could do strength sixteen, AP minus four, eight damage. So if you need that type, that other Titan dead, you use that. Um, and it does have its Questorus Alliance um, allegiance and its household, so it can get the benefits now from your regular Codex. Uh, it also has its titanic feet, I believe. Yep, it has its titanic feet. Um, weapon and ballistic skill 3 plus, strength 8, toughness 8, 26 wounds, 5 attacks, leadership 9, 3 plus, save. And I think it has its um, ion shields, right? Uh, super heavy walker, explodes, ion gauntlet shield. This model has a 5 plus invulnerable save. This model has a 4 plus invulnerable save against melee attacks. Each time a titanic unit makes a melee attack against this target, that model subtracts 1 from the hit roll. That's pretty interesting. Also, he's cheap compared to this guy. I actually think the Lancer is grossly undercosted for what he does. Or she, or they, depending on how it identifies. Sarasus Knight Castigator. This is the one with the Warblade and Bolt, Gauntlet, uh, bolt Cannon. It's an interesting looking knight, but I think he looks kind of derpy looking in all of his pictures until you see him in person and he looks amazing. Um, so the Castigator Bolt Cannon is 36 inches, heavy 16, strength 6, AP minus 2, 2 damage. Excellent marine killer. Um, just, just an excellent marine killer. Uh, and the Tempest Warblade is strength plus 6, so strength 14, uh, AP minus 3, 3 damage. And each time an attack is made with this weapon, uh, profile make two attacks instead of one so it actually makes eight attacks uh, It's interesting that this thing has less attacks than the Lancer So that's uh 26 wounds. Does he have uh, more wounds? I don't think so No, same wounds same toughness same strength same leadership same uh, save uh, He has an ion shield, so I think the ion shield is a five plus invulnerable save uh, super heavy walker, he explodes, he has Questorus Knight, he also has the household abilities. Uh, then we have the Serastus Knight Archeon. Um, uh, let's see, the Flamestorm Cannon, or Flame Cannon, uh, heavy, eight, heavy 2d6, strength 7, AP minus 2, 3 damage, auto hits, 18 inch range. Then he has the Twin Heavy Bolters. Uh, wow, he actually just has heavy bolters. And then he has a giant chain fist, which is silly. Uh, which he can go up to strength 16 or strength 8. Um, the first attack with the sweep is strength 8, AP minus 2, D3 damage. And each time an attack is made with this weapon, uh, make 3 hit rolls instead of 1. He has 4, so it's 12 attacks with that, which is amazing. Or he can do... Uh, actually, isn't that the same as Titanic Feet? Huh. Or he can do the saw, which is strength times two, so strength 16, AP minus four, six damage. And he can do four of those, so that's six, 12, 24 damage in total from him, which is incredible. Then we have the Questorus Knight uh, Magara. I don't know what this one is. Oh no, this is the Mechanicus one that looks all silly. Okay. 
the Atropos. I actually voice acted all of these knights for Dawn of War Ultimate Apocalypse. Um, yeah, they're pretty much the same as the other one. The Mora Tracks, the Questorus Knight Strix, or Sterix, however you say that. Um, I don't use these knights. I've never gone up against these knights, so I don't know them too much. The Porphyron, I do know quite well. Uh, I have fought this thing uh, on multiple occasions, and to be honest, it always underperforms. It either it either massively overkills its target, or it does absolutely nothing. So, movement of eight, uh, weapon skill four plus, ballistic skill three plus goes to a five plus. Actually, yeah, they all go to a five plus. Ugh. Um, strength eight, toughness eight, thirty wounds. 3 attacks, leadership 9, 3 plus save, and then it deteriorates, obviously, as you guys can see. Um, then it has its <laughs> Arcaris Auto Cannon and Last Cannons. They're just Auto Cannons and Last Cannons, respectively. Uh, the Helios Defense Battery, which is funny that the Helios Defense Missiles actually make it into the book, but not on the Ares or the uh, Helios uh, Whirlwind. So, interesting to see that they're in the book somewhere. They got dropped. Uh, heavy 2, Strength 8, AP minus 2, 3 damage. Uh, against aircrafts, it adds 1 to the hit roll. So it essentially negates the hit roll minus that you would normally get. Um, then it has its Twin Magna Laz Cannons, which is 72 inches, Heavy 2D3, Strength 12, AP minus 3, 6 damage, and Blast. This thing is crazy because I think it has two of these and two, yep. So this thing shoots on average two times per, that's four, that's eight shots, hitting on three plus, so that eight is gonna go down to five and then it's wounding on two, so that five is going down to four and this thing is going to be killing something dead because that's, that's a lot of damage. Whew. That's 24 damage from this thing. Honestly, it's not that impressive, um, but considering the chain sword, uh, the chain fist, the other one does that amount of damage. But it's still really, really, really cool and really tough and resilient. Um, but yeah, it's neat. Is the Porphyron actually worth its points? Oh, uh, where are you, Porphyron? Porphyron, one model, 780 points. No, it's not. It's definitely not worth its points. <laughs> the hell was I thinking? Um, yeah, this thing is not worth its points at all. 780 points, Jesus. You can take, what, three Shadow Swords for that? Two Shadow Swords for that? Then you have the Legio Titanicus, um, which are god-awful. Um, they're just not worth it at all. They nerf these things so far into the ground, they're, they're barely even worth looking at. Um, for the Warhound Titan, take it with the Flamer and the Twin uh, Plasma Blast Gun or the, um, or Double Flamer, which is 46 strength, 7 AP minus three, three damage. I actually like taking them with Double Flamethrowers right now because they're really, 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 it's the most efficient weapon you can put on this damn thing. And you don't need to worry about its ballistic skill going down. Uh, it has 50 wounds, so these things barely go down. Strength and toughness 8 instead of 9, which you would think would be the standard toughness for a Titan. Um, the Warhound Turbo Laser Destroyer is heavy 2d3. And they actually got rid of the macro rule. That's really interesting. Huh. These things used to be able to do double damage against Titan units, and they just up and got rid of that. Yeah, that's um, that sucks. Wow, they actually just flat out got rid of that. Huh. I don't know how I feel about that. All right, next one is the Reaver Titan at 150 power level, then 190 power level for the Nemesis Titan. Uh, which is the Warbringer. He's the one with the giant phallic cannon on his head. Um, Reaver Apocalypse Missile Launcher looks pretty decent. The Reaver Gatling Blaster is heavy 12 versus the Gatling Blaster of the standard Titan, 
which is the Vulcan Mega Bolter, which is heavy 20, which is a better weapon. Um, but this one's strength 16. No, wait, that's the melted one. Uh, the Gatling Blaster is strength 8, AP minus 3, 3 damage. It's actually pretty decent. Um, mine is armed with the Gatling Blaster. Mine's also in pieces because the leg broke. Um, the Apocalypse Missile Launcher is strength 7, AP minus 2, 2 damage. It's funny that this is a Titan, and I'm comparing its killability to a Space Marine, a Primera Space Marine. And it's it's really, really, really funny that I'm doing that as a comparison instead of it trying to kill all the Titans. Um, two Titans shouldn't actually shoot each other, to be honest. They should be dealing with actual threats on the battlefield. Uh, if you need something to kill a Titan, take a Knight to go and kill a Titan, and just run it across the battlefield and just punch it to death. Um, because these things go down fairly quickly to being punched to living hell. Um, the Volcano Cannon is heavy D6, strength 18, AP minus 5, 12 damage and a blast weapon. So that's pretty much what you're going to be throwing against enemy titans. But with these weapons and the way that they're worded and everything, you're going to be just shooting each other for like three turns before you kill each other. Uh, versus just uh, just not shooting each other and just killing everything else on a battlefield. Um, flink speed. Each time this model advances, do not make an advance roll. Instead, until the end of the phase, add 12 inches to the movement characteristic of this Titan. I wonder, can this guy get two power fists? That'd be amazing. Why can't Warhounds get two power fists? Uh, like Gargantuan power fists. I would totally take that. Or Giant Sword. They should get Giant Swords. Uh, Battle Titan, this model is eligible to declare a charge in the turn in which it fell back. Uh, each time this model makes a normal move, advanced, or falls back, it can uh, be moved across other models, excluding monsters and vehicles, as if they were not there, and uh, it just can't end its movement on top of them, um, or within engagement range. Uh, then it has Void Shields. Um, it's the same as before. This one has... how many Void Shields? Uh, boop -da -boop -da -boo. Oh, it doesn't actually tell me. It guess it tells me here. Um, this model has two void shields. Okay. So this model, this model has four. This model has six. So as we get bigger, they get worth it more. Um, but I still think the... For 2,000 points, though, I don't think I would take a Warhound. Considering for 2,000 points, I could take five knights, and they would do an infinite amount of damage. Uh, more than this thing. The Nemesis Warbringer has a bunch of things, uh, but he has his really big gun. Um, but honestly, he's not that impressive, to be honest. I personally don't like him. I think he's a really cool model, but overall, he's just kind of there. I'm going to actually take pictures and just stick them in these circles because it's really annoying me. Uh, then you have the Warlord Titan, and he's not worth it either because he's gigantic and completely, completely... Uh, if you're going into a Titan fight, uh, bring Titans, but if you're... If, there should be a separate point value for Titans allotted, uh, and if not, it should be doubled and given back to your... The Titan cost should just be cut in half. It They're grossly overpriced for what they are. Uh, so the Nemesis Titan is 3,800 points, the Reaver Titan is 3,000 points, the Warhound is 2,000 points, and the Warlord is 5,500 points. They are not worth it at all in any way, shape, or form. At 1,000 points, I would consider a Warhound. And that's it. That's it. I 1,000 points, I'm taking, what, two and a half knights? Two and a baby knight? Uh, which will kill it. Like, that's the sad thing. Like, a Knight Castigator will definitely kill a Warhound. A Warhound will also definitely kill a... kill him in in kind, but you're wasting such giant weapons and that's just not...